All right, well, fine. Let's get controversial then. Y'all be like, man, Sino, you've been taking it kind of safe. I've been taking it kind of safe. I've been talking about everything. <laughs> Do you realize I have three channels that I'm currently doing stuff? I'm doing political stuff. I'm doing stuff that the CIA is like got red beams coming through my house. <laughs> and I'm taking it safe. Wow. I'm not star, but I'm close. <laughs> now, let's talk about the Erica Badu interview, all right? Because everybody wants to make a big thing about it. And they haven't even read it. They just read an insert of it. And I read the entire interview. And there was other stuff in there I liked that, that was way better than what they were focusing on. Now, right off the bat, the person she's talking to has an agenda. In this interview, this person actually brought up points about Extension and Bill Cosby. Who would put those two in a same sentence to have it come out of their mouth? And I'm like, what does Erica Badu and Extension have to do with anything? And then she's like, okay, this was the question, and I'm going to get to the point where everybody's talking about, don't worry. What is your opinion on this larger discussion happening now about whether we can separate the art from the artist, be it Extension or Fela Kutu, Kuti or Lewis C. Clark or Bill Cosby? or whomever. Now see, right away, right away, he was on a road of an agenda. Who would put Lewis C. Clark and Bill Cosby together and mention that with extension and why was his name even thrown in there? But anyway, we're not even going to go down that road. But whom would ever do that? You could tell there was a certain agenda here. And what she was saying is, I don't want to ever get scared into not thinking for myself. That's something she don't want to do. And that's what the world wants you to do. Not think for yourself. Let us do the thinking for you. Watch television. Move how we tell you to move. Let the TV tell you what the, how to move. Let the internet tell you how to do. This is where you should go on Friday. This is where you should go on Saturday. This is what you should think about this. This is how you should think about that. Once you start thinking for yourself, truly... Then you have put yourself on a path of greatness. And you will feel so much better for it. And a lot of people will talk bad about you. A lot of people will go against you because they don't understand because they don't think for themselves. They follow a circle of the majority. And that's what she was trying to explain when she brought up the story of Jesus and Barabbas. Jesus is standing on the side, Barabbas is standing on the other side. And the people have to choose which one of them could go free. Some people started yelling, Barabbas, Barabbas, Barabbas. And so many people were doing that, the others just found safety in numbers. And they also started yelling, Barabbas, Barabbas, Barabbas. So, there you have it. The people could have set him free. So, with that being, well... 
with that being said, I'll go into the rest of the, the, the controversy that you guys are all waiting we get to. But this was a way to segue how he was going to dive deep down into trying to talk her into the Israeli press and everything else. Because you could tell, I have never met this person that's doing the interview, but I can assume that this person is Jewish. Now, I'm going to lead you to the events that led to the controversial statement. All right? Where they keep talking about the culture, we're basically, we're better at mobilizing our out of sense of injustice and anger that we're trying to figure out what to do next. And she just said, they could be bad around children, they could be bad with power, all those people all bad? Could be. Maybe they need to get kicked off the planet. I don't know. Each thing is individual. There aren't rules for how we can or should think about something. We don't have to believe everything we're hearing. At least I don't think we do. I'm glad I don't watch any of this stuff. And she's like, the news you mean, right? Everything. I read the description of the, the empath, empath of it, and I think I fit the description pretty well. It's about absorbing people's feelings. When, so the, the interviewer is confused because it's not going the way he wants this to go. But that means we shouldn't speak up when people, even good ones, do bad things or express hurtful ideas. When I was doing research for this interview, this is a slightly awkward question. She said, you can ask me anything. So that opened the door. Okay, thank you. I know this is maybe a weird pivot, but I think it's relevant. See, right away... That was what he was doing. He wanted to be Pandora's box. When she said, you can ask me anything, he just lit up with joy. When I was doing research, I came across an article from after you've gone to Israel. Why would this be the one you... Okay, well, let, let me just continue. Where the Israeli press was linking you to Louis Farrakhan and his alleged anti sentiments And it seemed that you were being criticized for defending him rather than denouncing anti sentiments I don't know if those reports were accurate, but it, is it valid to criticize the hurtful idea in an instance like that, even if you respect the person who holds that idea? And she said, absolutely but I never made a statement about Louis Farrakhan ever. What you're talking about is what happened in Palestine. At the time, the working title of her album was called Savior's Day, which is a holiday for the nation of Islam, but it's also her birthday. So she had went to Palestine and the journalist asked her, do you believe in Louis Farrakhan? Like, do you follow him? She said, sure I do. I'll follow anyone who has positive aspects. He single-handedly changed half of a nation of Islam to clean eating, clean living, caring for the families. He has flaws like any man. But I'm not responsible for that. I said I appreciate what he's done for all the black Americans. I mean, I'm not Muslim. I'm not Christian. I'm not anything. I'm an observer who can see good things and bad things. If you say something good about someone, people think it means that you've chosen a side. But I don't choose sides. I see all sides simultaneously. And that just don't fit the agenda of where this interviewer was trying to go. So he was like, well, that's not something most of us are good at. And then she takes it even further as she throws it something back at him for asking this question to make him feel very uncomfortable because she must know this guy is Jewish. That's why he brought and dug it up. So she threw this right back at him as a sharp dart to say, okay, since you're doing this interview and you should know this, 
and you're you're basically co-signing the idea like that's not something most of us are good at and she said we're not and I'm okay with that but I'm also okay with anything I have to say about Louis Farrakhan but I'm not an anti-semitic person I don't even know what anti-semitic was before I called it before before I was called it you know I'm a humanist I see the good in everybody I saw something good in Hitler boom 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 now you got everybody up in arms come again <laughs> come again yeah I did Hitler was a wonderful painter no he wasn't <laughs> and even if he was what would his skill as a painter have to do with any good in him? Okay, he was a terrible painter. <laughs> Poor thing, he had a terrible childhood. That means that when I, I'm looking at my daughter Mars, I could imagine her being in someone else's home and being treated so poorly and what that could spawn. And I see like that. I guess it's just the Pisces in me. I'm perfectly willing to accept that you might be operating on a higher moral plane than I am. But I think <laughs> going down the route of Hitler was a child once too is maybe turning the idea of empathy into an empty abstraction. Maybe so. It doesn't test my limits. <laughs> I, can, I can see this clearly. I don't care if the whole group says something. I'm going to be honest. I know I don't have the most popular opinion sometimes, but you don't think someone as evil as Hitler, who did what he did, has forfeited the right to other people's empathy. Why can't I say what I'm saying? Because he did such terrible things? Well, yes! <laughs> but it's also disheartening to hear you say that at a time like now when racism and anti-sentimentism are at such, it's such in the air. Why would you want to risk putting fuel on that fire? You asked me a question. I could have chosen not to answer. I don't walk around thinking about Hitler or Louis Farrakhan, but I understand what you're saying. Why would you want to risk fueling hateful thinking? I have a platform. I would never want to hurt people. I would never do that. I would never even imagine doing that. I would never even want a group of white men who believe that the Confederate flag is worth saving to feel bad. That's not how I operate. <laughs> oh gosh, if you can understand this level of thinking, this is excellent. I appreciate that, but the real struggle with the idea of how much we're supposed to make an effort to understand or have empathy for people who have dangerous backwards or hateful thinking, you want to take the moral high ground, but sometimes that also feel, feels the same as ceding territory. You you got that Pisces in you, that two fish. <laughs> I am Pisces, actually. I thought so. So am I. One fish swimming upstream while the other one swimming downstream. We're all <laughs> living in this continuity, the reality. We want to live a certain way or do a certain thing, and we don't believe we are emotionally attached to how the group thinks. The hive mentality takes over. But you know what's right in your mind and your heart. And you're strong enough to detach from the hive. Then sometimes, just sometimes, you may be able to do the right thing. Oh my gosh. This is, this is exactly the type of interview that's going to make everybody go crazy. So immediately, everybody took all of this stuff out of context. And there's other stuff in here that I liked in this interview way before this. But people want to focus on the Hitler stuff. So fine, let's talk about the Hitler stuff. Right? Because that's what you guys want to focus on. So this is why people are like, why don't you talk about her talking about Hitler? Because that's the only thing you guys saw. So let's talk about Hitler. Now. Here's the certain thing. When she said she saw the good in him, doesn't mean that she was taken up for him. 
It was the same point she just made for Louis Farrakhan in which this got brought up. You see, they want you to dance to their tune and no one else's. But when you make the analogy to Hitler and Farrakhan and try to show that, you see, the same way I just did for him, the same way I just did it for Hitler. But now you are bothered by this. You see, someone else was bothered by what I said about Farrakhan. But who who did Farrakhan kill? Who did he order to die? What did he do? But yet, you dislike this man just as much as you dislike this man. As far as evil and everything, you say the same things about this man who's done basically no crime, hadn't committed a crime, and told people to be violent, try to get people to eat clean, pray and do those things, and versus a guy who ordered murder and genocide and did everything that he did. And I still found good things about him is what she was saying. She basically threw that into his face and see how he reacted to it. And when his reaction was so much outrage, it was like, aha! See? Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha, Rube. You see, because here's the thing. They're saying like this, for those who don't understand. If a German woman, if a Jewish woman rather, told you she didn't like Germans, the actual, anybody in this world, nobody would ask them why. If they asked a Jewish woman right now and she told you, I just, I'm sorry, I, I just cannot get along with Germans. I can't do it. Nobody would ask her why. Let a black person say, I'm sorry, I just can't get along with white people. I can't, I can't do it. Why? Why would you do that? Why? Because of slavery? Let it go. That was 400 years ago. Oh my God. You still holding on to that? One, it wasn't 400 years ago. It was, slavery was over 400 years. And we still ain't treated right. Dr. King had only been dead for 50 years. There's still 50 more years. There's people that still marched with him walking around. Now, let's get things back into, you know, perspective here. It's okay for that to happen, which that happened for the a min amount of, the amount of years of genocide that happened with the um, with Hitler's you know reign and what he was doing over there, the tyranny he was putting over there, the Holocaust, and that was let's say if it was twenty years. That's still a lifetime of torture and unfortunate for any human being. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. I wouldn't wish slavery that had lasted for hundreds of years, many generations, born and died in slavery for generations and centuries. We're talking about a hundred years and then another hundred after that, then another hundred after that. And another hundred after that, that's like four lifetimes compared of slavery as compared to anything else on this planet. Four generations of slavery compared to something that lasted not even a lifetime. A normal what would be viewed as a lifetime. Something that happened that small is actually way so much greater than another person's 
four lifetime saga of torture and mistreatment and still having those to fight these iniquities to this day and yet we are not allowed to express outrage but yet we're supposed to show sympathy and empathy for everyone else how is that fair? As a black woman in America, Erica Badu has the right to talk and feel how she feels. Period. Without anyone being able to question her. As her ancestors were killed, murdered, and raped and sold in slavery and the majority of the people that owned slaves were Jewish people the majority of the slaves were owned by Jewish people That's an historical textbook. That's not me just making that up. Not the majority of the Jewish people, but the majority of the slaves were owned by Jewish people. If you could understand that, because they will twist it on you. As they tried to twist it and said, you said that 70% of the Jews owned slaves, which is not true. But it was like 70% of the slaves were owned by Jewish people. So you have to definitely think about this. Some people have their own mind of thinking. I think torture is torture. Pain is pain. I'm not going to say, well, he suffered more. He suffered for eight years. This person suffered for, for three. I don't care if he suffered a week. Torture is torture. You know, inhumane treatment is inhumane treatment when there's no reason for the inhumane treatment. It's nothing in this nation, in this world, this country that we live in. We're quick to pass the buck to somebody else to do the damage. To do all of the work that we don't want to do. And we're supposed to have all these morals. But we're so hypocritical, it's ridiculous. We're so hypocritical because everything we say and do is based on the majority. So, it works in different ways. And what I mean is this. We sit there and saw planes go into buildings, right? The very next day, we as Americans have never heard of the name Osama Bin Laden. The very next day, there's a fold-out picture of Osama Bin Laden in the paper. And there's, and it says, public enemy number one, Osama Bin Laden. And the next day, this whole country hated him. And they didn't want to, they had no evidence, never seen any evidence, that this person did anything. Not one person was saying, well, I won't take say that. The majority of the people that were saying, talking, was talking about murdering him. Murdering Osama Bin Laden and anybody that followed him. The general public who was just outraged over the murder that just happened to those people in the building want murder 
back to those people dropping bombs on them even though they have kids wives everything they don't care burn and murdered them the majority of the people didn't care they were outraged at what happened and they don't even have any facts that that had happened because we weren't given any and this is September 12th everybody we weren't given any now when it came out that they went in and killed him why wouldn't they capture him and get information out of him why wasn't he put on a trial to find out if he was the person that actually did it but us as hypocrites are upset that they came to kill us by running building planes through buildings but was not outraged enough to want to go over there and drop bombs and kill them. See the hypocrisy? So justice to you is eye for an eye. Even though it's not what it means in the Constitution. It's not what it means by law. Because if that's the case, then who are the jails for? What is the trial system about? He was supposed to stand trial. By law. But no, he was ordered to die by the people. That we signed over our rights and power of attorney to the United States government. To do whatever they wanted to do. Even if they decided one day, you know what, I think you're a terrorist. Now they have the right to just treat you just like they would treat anybody else in the country. And all your constitutional rights are written aside. Oh, I didn't know I signed up for that. Well, yeah, you, well, you might not have known, but you did. Patriot Act. <laughs> so, I have no problem with Erica Badu and what she said. And... I stand by that. She's an American. She has the right. She's a black woman. She has the right. Say what you please. And if Jewish people are uncomfortable about that, then they should feel even more uncomfortable about slavery. I'm out.